So, what the hell is up with this episode? Like, this is one of the rare times where I've seen a one-arc episode and thought, this should have been two arcs, or maybe even three. The fact that this is all wrapped up and resolved by the end of the episode just feels kind of weird. The Gungans are attacking! Huh? No, it's just a guy mind-controlling them. Huh? It's all part of a Separatist plot, and the Separatists are going to attack Naboo. Huh? <laughs> like, what? there's so many pieces of this puzzle missing. Why the attack on Naboo, for instance? I mean, keep in mind, Palpatine is ultimately behind all this stuff, so why is Palpatine cool with Naboo being attacked? I'm not saying he has any particular attachment to it, I'm saying, what's the benefit of attacking Naboo? And then, of course, Jar Jar... Jar Jar... I have to admit, Jar Jar is probably more tolerable than he usually is here. My biggest problem with him is he was constantly losing character. The boss, I mean me, says that the boss, I mean I say, that I, we should attack. I mean he should attack. Go attack. Go do the thing that attacking. Yes. Now I know that we've all kind of made fun of Grievous in the Clone Wars and how pathetic he is, but this episode's a new low. In, in addition to the fact that Jar Jar fools him for a surprisingly large period of time. And then as Jar Jar is trying to escape, nice gag with the elevator button, Grievous takes a moment to stand in posture. And then when he goes outside, he gets taken down by Gungans. <laughs> like, uh, granted, not all Gungans are as pathetic as Jar Jar, and it took the most badass Gungan ever, General Tarkin, or Tar Tar Tartalan, sorry. I'm still probably saying his name wrong. The General, to take him down but and, and in a self-sacrifice. But still, come on, Grievous. <laughs> like, the sight of him being impaled in each leg and just basically being dragged away, which just, it just says everything it needs to now, then there's the fact that Dooku leads Anakin into a thing. Now, I liked the idea of this, because one of the things I've always liked the idea of is if they wanted to, you know, if, if in other words, if Anakin wasn't basically a protected asset by Palpatine, I have a feeling they could have taken Anakin out any number of times up until this point in time, if they specifically dedicated themselves to doing so. And this episode kind of shows why I feel that way. Lure him off, fight him with some Magna droids and Dooku, and... It's worth noting that Dooku spent the entire time, this was actually kind of a nice touch, pretending as if he was above it all, just slowly walking away as his magna droids do it, refusing to even look at Anakin, and not even pulling his lightsaber out unless he had to. It wasn't until Anakin drew on the dark side for a brief moment, throwing off the magna guards, actively attacking him, that Dooku started getting serious. And when the fight was over, Dooku's just like, <sighs> you know, takes a moment to catch his breath, like you could see, oh wow, that was harder than it should have been. It was a nice moment, because it showcases how Dooku was in the superior position, but only because of superior planning. In other words, he wasn't actually a match for Anakin, and you can kind of feel how that might have rattled him and set, the, set some issues or, or reverberations for the future. And of course, um, that leads to the next problem with this episode. I mean, it's, it makes a degree of sense, but at the same time, it makes no sense at all. They agree to trade Anakin for Grievous. Grievous is the supreme military commander of the Separatist forces. He is absolutely critical to the war effort for the Separatists. His absence would be a massive blow to the Separatists for the war. Th this is huge. This is mega huge. Anakin's a guy. Now, okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Anakin is a very powerful Jedi and a general. But that's still, like... Again, ignore the mythos. Ignore Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader for a second. Just look at the situation tactically, or actually, more accurately, strategically. Anakin is so much less important than Grievous to this war effort. This is not a fair trade that they're making. And the fact that they go along with it is just kind of weird. And again, it feels like there should have been more additional steps there, because it's basically like Padme, correctly, says, no, we can't make that trade. And then it is, boss, what's his face? He's like, no, you have to. Why? What, for what possible purpose? Why would you do that? That makes no sense. Anyways. Whatever. <laughs> Honestly, whatever. Um, I, as weird as this is going to sound, I still found enjoyment in this episode. I feel like the better execution here in Season 3 and Season 4 and onwards, uh, it kind of helps flesh out episodes that, frankly, don't have a lot going on for them, like this one. So, still enjoyed it, despite everything, and I will be seeing you guys next time.